yes so sugar students today we're going to talk about lot of things chemical properties of acids and bases first of all what are acids well acids taste sour and they they have some properties like we can say in in case we have litmus paper they will turn the blue color of litmus to red so if you remember bar blue color of litmus to red a for acids these are acids right on the other hand bases taste bitter like soda calcium hydroxide sodium hydroxide so let's discuss chemical properties of acids and bases right students the first property is reaction of acids with metals well we know students we have so many elements around 180 or more elements out of them there are some elements which are strong like iron like aluminum copper they have luster luster means on the surface they have chamak you know then in the chemical reactions their atoms give electrons so these are metals for example copper iron aluminum magnesium the left side of periodic table is all filled with atoms except few right so these metals we want to see what is the reaction of acids with metals so acids when we want to talk about their reaction they must be dilute means acids work best when they are dilute because then when they are mixed with water then they readily give hydronium ion you know so acids are working the best when they are dilute that's why with every acid in the bracket we write aq that is aqueous aqueous solution of acid that is solution which has water then the acid works the best same is the case with bases that's why we don't really want to know the reaction of concentrated acids rather we want to know the reaction of dilute acids so many acids are there okay now students dilute acids like hcl this is hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid h2 so4 they react with certain active metals now all the metals are not very active we know the series please search on internet the activity series reactivity series of metals so some of the most reactive elements or metals are you know sodium and potassium you know and then when you go down you know you have gold and silver they are not so reactive you know in between so many elements are there you should know which are more reactive which are less reactive as you go down the reactivity decreases these are the most reactive metals then you should ask yourself why they are more reactive it's all because of the arrangement of electrons in the different orbits of elements so these dilute acids are there they react with certain active metals like zinc iron etc they form salt now this is not the salt namak which we use in our kitchen in fact that is also a salt nacl so from this we also learn that in a compound you know in a formula unit if we have chloride chlorine in the last it's a salt also any student can tell me uh, any other feature of salt how we can identify from the formula that this is a salt any student from cl and so4 beautiful from sulfate if something if we have some sodium sulfate potassium sulfate iron sulfate so that is also a salt very good so students these acids 
hydrochloric acid, dilute sulfuric acid, when they react with these active metals, what they produce? They produce salt plus hydrogen gas is evolved. Evolved means in the reaction it is produced. So let us write some of the reactions of acids with metals. We can write like this, general reaction, metal plus dilute acid. You already know the meaning of dilute, which is an aqua state, which is mixed with water, will give us what student? Salt plus hydrogen. 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 Yes. Salt definitely will be in solid state. Metal is also in solid state. Dilute acid is in aqueous state. This is gas. You can put an arrow or you can put G. But don't put both. Only put one. All right, students. So we have some examples like zinc, solid, plus H2SO4. This is sulfuric acid. Will give us zinc sulfate plus H2. This reaction is balanced. Like that students, there are number of reactions of acids with metals. Now we see reaction of acids with carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. They are also known as bicarbonates. What are carbonates? So students, you know, limestone we have already seen some reactions of limestone. Then chalk, the same chalk which your teachers write on the board. And marble, in Hindi we call it sangmarmar. Right? Even after painting the Kali, you know, on our walls, that is also calcium carbonate. So all these are you know, forms of calcium carbonates. Acids, obviously, you know, acids, they react with metal carbonates. Metal carbonates. See, carbonate is an ion. Carbonate is a, yes, students, is it a cation or an ion? Carbonates and hydrogen carbonates, are they cations or anions? Any student? Anions. Anions. Yes, they are anions. Acids react with metal carbonates and they produce their corresponding salts. So see, this is same. Here also, when the acids reacted with metals, they produced salts. Here also, when acids react with carbonates or hydrogen carbonates, also known as bicarbonates, they produce salts. Is it same? No, there's some dif difference. With this salt, carbon dioxide gas, here, when they react, acids reacted with metals, hydrogen gas was formed. But here, with the carbonates and hydrogen carbonates, when acids react, they, they produce carbon dioxide and water. Obviously, water will be in liquid state. So let's write some uh, equations. So students, you see metal carbonate. So metal carbonates are, it may be calcium carbonate, CO, CO3. One more thing, students, you should know how to write the formula units, you know. So they, we have a video and share the link. So that video will explain you how to write this. Means you should know whether it is CaCO3 or Ca2CO3 or CaCO32 or CaCO3. You should know. Okay. Plus 2 HCl, which is this acid, students? HCl, hydrochloric acid. Chloric acid. It will produce CaCl2. Ca you know, will combine with chlorine. Calcium with chlor combined with chlorine producing calcium chloride. 
Now, why it is CaCl2? You know, calcium ion is plus 2. Cl is minus 1, right? Means it is short of 1 electrons. Calcium can give 2 electrons. So, plus 2, minus 1. So, 2 will go in the field of chlorine. 1 will go in the field of calcium to make the formula. So, it will be Ca1. We need not write 1. Like, suppose we write x. We know the coefficient and the power of x is 1, 1. But we don't write. We simply write x. So, Ca, need, no need to write 1. Cl2 will come here, Cl2. Okay? I'm giving you a hint, but you uh, read it properly with that link. Ca, Cl2, right, students? Plus carbon dioxide, plus water. They have to be there. So, this is the reaction. Is it balanced? That you can see. So, now we also study the test for carbon dioxide gas. Means how we are sure that carbon dioxide gas are produced. In the last case, you know, anyone can tell how we can experimentally understand that hydrogen gas is produced. Simply take a matchstick, light it near the hydrogen, near where the hydrogen gas is produced, there will be a popping sound. And this matchstick will be extinguished, Bujjayidi, because it has consumed all the oxygen around it. So here, how you are sure that carbon dioxide gas is produced? So carbon dioxide gas, when it is produced, it is passed through lime water. All right, students. When it is passed through lime, what is lime water, students? Lime water is CaOH2. This is calcium hydroxide. It's a base. It's a base. Whenever you have this hydroxide, it's a base. So carbon dioxide is passed through lime water. It turns milky. Whenever carbon dioxide is passed through lime water, the lime water will turn milky. Why? Because white precipitates of calcium carbonate will be formed. What are precipitates? You see students in the container, in our villages, you know, our mother and other dairy people, they heat the butter and in the end, when the butter is converted to desi ghee, you know, when it is converted to ghee, sometimes if the person is uh, not so mm, experienced, uh, you know, rotating the butter at regular intervals or because of other impurities in the butter, some press white precipitates are formed. You know, uh, in Punjabi, we call it chitri. So these are precipitates which settle at the bottom of any, after any reaction. So calcium carbonate precipitates are formed. That's why the color of water turns milky. How we can write this reaction? Calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide will give us CaCO3. These are the precipitates. I can write PPT plus water. Okay. If it is not balanced, you can balance it. Here I will write L, right? Calcium hydroxide is an aqueous state. Carbon dioxide obviously is a gas. All right, students. Now we come. How calcium bicarbonate is produced? This calcium carbonate, which is produced as a result of passing carbon dioxide gas through Anyone? We have to pass Mansimrit Kaur, carbon dioxide gas through calcium hydroxide. Then this stuff is produced. All right, from this, we will come to calcium hydrogen carbonate or calcium bicarbonate. How? Calcium carbonate 
you know, which is responsible for milkiness. As it is precipitate, they will write solid plus H2O, you know, water. Uh, the water is water vapors are there in the atmosphere, or we can add water plus carbon dioxide is also there in the atmosphere. So, this is gas. This will produce CaHCO3. Two. So, you can, this is also aqueous. Well, student, this is calcium. What is this? Anyone? This is bicarbonate, no. calcium bicarbonate. Made by two, or we can call it calcium hydrogen carbonate. Am I right, students? Now, quickly, we go to reaction of acids with metal oxides. So, you know, students, when we have iron plate, you know, there is a rusting you know, in the presence of water and oxygen. That rusting is, you know, oxides of iron. So that rust, that junk, that junk is oxides of iron. So whenever acids react with metal oxides, what happens? Students, acids react with certain metal oxides, not all, not all. They react with certain metal oxides. Now, these metal oxides, because they are basic in nature, okay, so how we can say something is basic and something is acidic, number one, by the taste, but you might die, you know, when you are tasting an acid, so better is know their pH value, potential of hydrogen, I have already told you, if it is, yes, students, what are the range of pH value for acids, anyone? And what is the range of pH value for bases? Come on. 0, zero to 7 is acids. Correct. And 7 to 14 is bases. Base. Beautiful. That's really wonderful for a government school boy. So when you go left, the acidity increases. And when you go towards right, the basicity also increases means a base with number 14 is very strong as compared to a base with number 10 a base with number 10 is stronger as compared to base with number 7 similarly acid you know uh, i think student it's not zero uh, can anyone correct is it zero or one Please check it, either it is zero or one, okay? So the acid which have pH value one will be more acidic than the acid with pH value um, three. Can anyone can, uh, check from internet and let me know whether it is zero or one, okay? So, it's zero only, sir. Zero only, huh? Okay, I'm sorry. This is zero only. Good. So. Similarly, you can say the, uh, the acid which is having 5.5 pH value would be, would be more acidic than the acid which has 6.5 value. And the reverse, acid with 6.5 value is less acidic as compared to acid with 5.5 value. Okay, And water, it is slightly on the right side of 7. You know, the ideal water to drink, not the water coming out of from RO that is acidic. It has a pH value of 4.5 or 5. Not at all good for your consumption because more acidic water you drink, your body turns acidic. There are chances for potential and very dangerous diseases, cells that they can grow in your body. So say no to RO and just have some filters, the tubes they use in RO, the filters, they're really good. Simply attach those filters, do it in the IY project and simply pass the water in your home through those, uh, uh, those tube filters and drink that water. Okay. Metal oxides are basic, so they are also known as basic oxides. Remember. Right, students? 
so these metal oxides are known as basic oxides when these basic oxides are metal oxides when they react with acids what do they form they form salt see in all the cases there is salt but students in the first case what was that when acids reacted with uh, metals we had salt plus hydrogen okay. in case when the acids reacted with carbonates and hydrogen carbonates huh it gave us salt this this was the salt but instead of hydrogen gas we got yes carbon dioxide plus water water and now in the third case in metal oxides react with acids we get salt plus anyone only water no carbon dioxide so let me write a reaction uh, depicting this so we can have uh, metal oxide is copper oxide cuo can any student identify what is this do we use it in our home yes what is this copper oxide yeah have you ever seen copper oxide you see in the home but if some copper plate is there in the atmosphere for a long so greenish layer will be formed as a result of uh, you know oxidation process so this is known as copper oxide okay this layer formed is copper oxide with 2 hcl will give you salt so salt will be now which salt it will be the salt of which metal this will be the salt which metal it will be the chloride of copper it will be the salt of copper i told you salts are if you want to identify salt either they are either they are chlorides or they are sulfates we will learn more about them in details right now you be sure in chlorides and sulfates are all salts hydroxides are all bases so is it right this formula cu is plus 2 this is minus 1 so it will be cu cl2 copper chloride plus h2 always is same am i right so this is rea reaction of acid with number 1 uh metals uh, then metal carbonates and bicarbonates and then with metal oxides done now let's learn about reaction of bases so we have only two categories in this reaction of bases with metal you know some strong bases strong bases mean which have the ph value towards 14 these strong bases they react with some active metals you know what are the active metals we have zinc iron you know etc they are active metals they react with active metals simply you know they they have some they have uh, you know uh, there something which is produced but along with that we get hydrogen gas just like you see this is ideal to this is similar to which case when acid reacted with metals also hydrogen was produced here also hydrogen is produced let us write a equation call it when it react with some base students in acids if it is hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid or nitric acid what is important hydrogen h is important in bases what is important so h ion calcium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide you know all are and sodium hydroxide all are so students please uh, mute yourself 
Okay, please don't disturb the recording. So zinc solid and sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, you know, we always take this, uh, we add some water so that the bases and acids, they are more reactive. Uh, take two formula units. So definitely we will get hydrogen gas, we know. When these bases react with metals, they give hydrogen gas. Along with that, we will get sodium zincate. N A 2 Z N O 2. This is solid. What is this, students? This is sodium zincate. Okay. Z N O 2. Zincate. Sodium zincate. Okay. Then we quickly go. Now I uh, try to, uh, uh, when I'll upload this video, Let's see how many students can write two more reactions in the comment section. Uh, a reaction of bases with metals. Two more reactions in comment section. Okay. Or whatever cases we have discussed, try to find more reactions and write in comment section. Okay. Then reaction of bases with non-metallic oxides. So you know what are non-metals? You know students, chlorine, you know, hydrogen, all these gases, they are non-metals. Okay, so on the right side of periodic table, fluorine, you know, all these are non-metals. Oxygen, okay, nitrogen, all these elements are non-metals. So reaction of bases with non-metals. Bases react with non-metallic oxides. They react with non-metallic oxides. The non-metallic oxides students they are acidic in nature and uh, unlike uh, metal oxides i've already told you metal oxides are anyone remember basic in nature so this non metallic oxides they are acidic in nature that's why they are also known as acidic oxides one basic okay. students uh, not basic, acidic oxides. The metallic oxides are basic in nature. Once again, metallic oxides. Example of metallic oxides, students, we have taken CuO, right? Or iron oxide, ferrous oxide, ferric oxides. These are all metallic oxides. They are which they are basic in nature. And non-metallic oxides, they are acidic in nature. So when they react with non-metallic oxides, they produce salt and water. So example, example, one more thing. The reaction proves that metallic oxides are acidic in nature. This reaction also produces. Okay. You see that students, we can write this reaction CO2. We know that it's a gas plus slaked lime. Slaked lime. Anyone remembers the formula for slaked lime? Amritpal Singh? The C CaOH2. So happy. Calcium hydroxide. So these are slaked. This is slaked lime. Okay. CO2 with slaked lime will give us salt Ca, CO3 and water H2O. So students, we also come to know that even carbonates are salts. You see, salts I told you they are chlorides, they are sulfates, and even these carbonates, they are also salts, okay? Sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate, calcium carbonate, all are salts, sulfates, uh, sodium sulfate, calcium sulfate, potassium sulfate, sodium chloride, so all are salts, okay? So in the starting, we had remembered that when we wanted to segregate 
एसिड बेसिस साइड्स ऑल द केमिकल कंपाउंड्स ऑल द केमिकल कंपाउंड्स दे कैन बी सेग्रीगेटेड इनटू एसिड्स बेसिस एंड साइड्स बेसिस अपॉन देयर केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ओके स्टूडेंट्स सो नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस एसिड्स एंड बेसिस इन वाटर सॉल्यूशन देन यूटिलाइज